Hello everyone, this is Gail, and I am really going to step outside of my comfort zone today. Uh, I've had some requests for figures or animals or things like that. So I'm going to attempt to make a little dog. And I say attempt because I have... I remember doing this, oh goodness, maybe 15 years ago, maybe even longer ago than that. And I made some notes, but let me show you my notes. Those are my notes. So hopefully from my notes, I can remember enough to put, um, to make something out of this. Let me... Let me just make, just for your information, I made most of my cuts with these cutters. These are my Kemper cutters. This is the one inch, I believe. Yeah, this is the largest. This is one inch. This one is, oh, I don't know, about seven sixteenths. This one is a quarter inch. And this one is an eighth of an inch. And what I did, you can see here, I rolled out. Here's my white. You know, I rolled out. But what I did here, and I've got some extras because I was going to make it smaller according to my instructions, and it was going to be just way too small for you to be able to see. But, um, let me cut that one more. I think I'm going to need one more. Um, but I cut with these. What I did with my brown is I used my one inch cutter. These are rolled to the thickest setting. It was rolled to the thickest setting of the pasta machine. And I cut four of these one inch ones and rolled them together to make this ball. Then I took two and rolled them together to make this ball. Then I took... The next largest, which was the 7 sixteenths or something like that, and I cut two out of this for each one of these. So I cut four. These are going to be for his legs or his feet. And then you can see I used the one quarter inch to cut some ecru, and what this ecru is rolled out on a number three. I wanted that a little bit thinner because they're going to go on top of the brown. This is uh, raw sienna. And then I also cut one out of the 7 sixteenths one for this, which is going to be his muzzle. I've got a little tiny ball of pink. I didn't measure that. A little tiny ball, actually, one, I cut this, the little tiny one, the one-eighth. I cut two one-eighth circles and rolled those into little white balls. And then I took one of the black of the one-eighth inch and cut it in half and made two little tiny black balls. But anyway, let me just, let's just start, and I'll see, like I said, I'm going to refer to my notes, and hopefully I won't get too lost. But I am not a sculptor. I will admit that up front. I do not do sculptures. I am not talented in that way, but I'm always willing to try. And I've got my little tiny ruler here, not that it matters now. This was mainly to measure these balls, so I'm just going to move this excuse me, out of the way in case I need it again. So this ball, if you want me to measure it, it's four of those one inch circles on the thickest setting of the pasta machine. And it made a ball a little more than three-fourths of an inch in diameter. But I'm going to take this and I'm going to lay it here. Let me come down a little closer because with my new camera set up, everything is so far away. But I'm going to roll on the side 
See what I'm doing? To make sort of a teardrop, but I don't want a total teardrop, and I'm going to press that down here. I'm going to keep the top flat, and that's going to be his body. And I'm going to take a needle tool, and hopefully you can see this. I'm going to draw a line down the middle and just a little V at the bottom. No, I think it's the other way around. I'm sorry. Let's start all over. I'll just do it on the other side so that this this will be the back. Just heal that seam a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to come down the front. This is going to make his legs. And this is just going to be just like where his legs come together. All right. I know you can't, doesn't look like much of a dog's body, but we'll, uh, we'll do that. So I'm going to take these two balls, the two, uh, did I measure these? Like three-eighths inch balls. And I'm going to roll these out, and I'm going to flatten them a little bit on my work surface. So it doesn't have to be totally flat, but just flatten them a little bit. I'm going to set those on either side here, and these are going to be his feet. Looks like this dog is going to have big feet. And I'm going to take these. Let me put my cutters away so I don't keep knocking them over. I'm going to take these small little circles and I'm going to put those down here because those are going to be like the pads on his feet. And then I'm going to take my needle tool, go set him up, and I'm just going to put little creases in the top to look like he has toes. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm expecting a phone call. I'll be right back. I apologize. That was a robocall, but I am expecting a call just to give you warning. I don't know when today they're going to call me back. Anyway, so this is his little body with his feet, and if you wanted to give some texture to his feet, you can. Actually, what I wanted to do was to use this on his body just to give him a little bit of... This is just one of these faux... faux uh, fun foam shapes and this one is a heart but see the texture on it kind of looks like hair so I'm just gonna make sure that it's going up and down just want to give him some some hair make so he isn't so blah looking if you want to set that up you can now we're going to work on his head and get this out. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make another almost teardrop shape. And I'll press it down there. And before I do anything, let me go ahead and give this some texture. Alright, so this is going to be his head. And the first thing I'm going to do is take these little white balls. I'm going to just make them just a little bit into a oval type shape. And then I'm going to press them down. Okay. 
see, so that he's not quite, um, not quite round, but more of an oval shape. I'm going to place that right about there. And put this one right about there. Then I'm going to take these little tiny black dots. And these might even be too big. I might I should have probably made them half the size, but that's all right. It'll work for demonstration purposes. And I'm going to take this larger size ecru. I'm going to put that here for his muzzle. Then I've neglected to make a little ball of black for his nose. And again, I'm going to make, a, well, that's too much of an oval, but a little bit of an oval shape, more like a piece of rice. And put that here for his nose. Can you see where it's beginning to look a little bit like a dog? And then I'm going to take my needle tool again, and I'm going to make a little, little mouth. And then this little piece of pink, and this might be even too big. I'm going to do another. This one I am going to make into a teardrop. And I'm going to flatten that. And I'm going to take my needle tool. I think I'll stick the skinny end in there and press that into the mouth with my needle tool. That might be a little bit big. But this is going to be just his tongue hanging out. I'm going to just make a mark down the middle. And you can even curve it a little. Just so it doesn't look quite so long. So, see, see his tongue. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to take, make a snake. And I don't probably need much of this. But I'm going to make two long skinny logs and I'm going to cut this in half. This is about a little more than an inch and a quarter, maybe an inch and three-eighths. Let me just use this to cut it in half. I'm going to flat roll one in into a little point. And then I'm also going to flatten this out. Because a dog that has a tongue that large has got to have ears that large. So let me just press that onto my heart. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to, let me show you, I'm going to roll this, this is the outside. I'm going to roll this into just a little bit of a loop. And attach it right here on top of his head. And I'm going to use my needle tool to attach it. And then you can... Do that. I think he's so cute. Let 
texturize this other ear and make a little loop and just use your needle tool to attach that and I'm going to let them just come up a little bit what I will do is this is my large uh, large ball tool that it's a sculpey thing I'm going to just make a little divot in there so that his head will fit in there and there's my little dog <laughs> isn't he darling I think I'll give him a tail since I've got this brown already rolled out I think I'm gonna make him a tail that feels like it's got air in it I don't know why this has air in it I think I'll just start with a ball that I know doesn't have air So I don't know whether to give him a big fluffy tail or a long skinny tail. But again, I'm going to roll it this way on here just to get it give some texture. And stick his tail on there and I'm well that's way too long, but how about like this and just have his tail curve around probably should have put his ears a little bit further up on top of his head like I say there's some things I just don't remember but now I think I do remember the ears went up on top of his head so when you make yours make sure your ears are up high not on top of his eyeballs That looks a lot better. And you can just have them come down wherever you want them. But there's my little dog. So you can do similar things with this with other animals. Just take a picture, I mean look at a look at your pet, whether it's a dog or a cat and think about it part by part I did the body I didn't worry with separate legs I just drew the line I haven't got his tail stuck on there very well just drew the line for his legs added a ball put another color contrasting color on the top as like the pads of his feet then I did the same thing with his head. I formed his head. Then I made his eyes, which goes just about, just above the middle. Then his muzzle and a nose and a little tongue. His ears. I could have made his ears a little bit longer, couldn't I? But that's all right. But with a cat, you could do pretty much the same thing, except make little pointed, pointed ears at the top. Uh, maybe make the face a little rounder. The paws, I mean, the feet could be the same. You wouldn't want a cat's tongue hanging out, so that wouldn't work probably. But you could do, you know, just dissect it into small little sections. But this is my little dog, and I will press his tail on and I'll set it like this when I bake him so that the tail I might even stick it right there so when he's baked he will be all ready to go so I hope you enjoyed that it was a short tutorial but it's something that I've been wanting to do and just needed to step out of my comfort zone and do it so hope you like this I'll be back soon again with another polymer clay video bye bye